All right, in this video, which we kind of talked about in class already, we're going to look at how to make a position versus time graph into a velocity versus time graph. So the first thing we do is we've divided up our position versus time graph into different segments where the line has changed direction. And so in this case, there are a total of six different segments. So we're just going to start off by figuring out how much time passes between each. So from here to here, section A, we have two seconds pass. From two to four, that's two seconds. Four to five for section C is one second, two seconds, two seconds, one second. And then we're going to figure out the distance that has been traveled here over these segments. So for A, it's gone from zero to one. So that's a distance of one meter. And I'm just going to write plus one meter here. I'm not going to even worry about direction because it's in the positive direction. Um, it's moving upward. For B, it's at one meter the start, and it's still at one meter here, so its distance, it hasn't traveled anywhere, it's zero. For C, it goes from one meter to two meters, so that's also going to be plus one meter. For D, it starts at two, it finishes at two, it hasn't gone anywhere, that's zero meters. For E, it's gone from positive two to zero, so that's negative two meters, and that's the negative direction if you want to think of it. And for F, it's basically stayed still zero meters. So from this, we're going to calculate, I'm going to call this the velocity, not even the speed. So velocity, speed, distance over time. So in this case, this is actually technically displacement then if we're going to say it can be positive or negative, but very similar. So for A, the displacement over time, one divided by two, the velocity is going to be 0.5 meters per second. It'll be positive. For B, zero divided by two, the velocity would be zero. For C, one divided by one is one. For D, 0 divided by 2 is 0. For E, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. And for F, 0 over 1 is 0. So these are the velocities that we are going to be graphing in the graph below. And again, it's not a speed versus time graph. It's velocity. That's why I'm allowing some of these to be negative. So now this, again, is not a great scale. Um, you're going to notice that if this is 0 time, this is 5 seconds. There's 10 boxes. It's kind of awkward. Every two boxes is one second. So I guess you can get used to odd scales. I'm just going to label them here. So every two boxes is one second. Ideally, we'd have a better scale. And likewise, if this is one meter per second, then this means right in the middle is 0.5. So not the greatest scale, but we can work with it. This would be negative 0.5. So now I just graph this. So segment A, which lasts for two seconds, has a velocity of 0.5. So for the first two seconds, I'm just going to draw a horizontal line at 0.5. The velocity for those first two seconds during segment A, I don't have to label it A, I'm just doing it, is 0.5. Segment B, the velocity is 0, and that lasts for two seconds. So I'm just going to go right here. I can drop it straight down if I like. And for two seconds, from 2 to 4, the velocity is 0. And then at time C, for one second, the velocity is one. So one is up here. So that only lasts for one second. I can do this. For D, it goes back to zero. And that lasts for two seconds. So one, two. We're at seven seconds. Then E is negative one again. So down here. And that lasts for two seconds. And then lastly, back to zero. So this is my velocity versus time graph. And a lot of quick jumps in my velocity. It's not technically possible in reality. Um, but for the situation, we'll allow it, and that's it. So that's how you get a velocity versus time graph from a position graph. Now, the next two questions are how far did the object travel? So to figure out how far it traveled, you're going to add up all these distances, but ignore the signs. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It counts. So we have 1 plus 1 plus 2, that means it traveled a total of 4 meters. Basically, it went out 2 meters and then back, and that's all it did. And its displacement is just how does it compare from its original location. So it started at 0, and it finished at 0. Actually, that's where it finished. So its displacement is 0 meters. You could also get its displacement by adding these up and including the negatives. So positive 1 plus positive 1 plus negative 2 gives you zero. So that's some information we can get from this. But anyway, uh, use this to try to answer question three uh, on the worksheet, which we had started in class before. And, you know, it's tricky to draw on the slides, but do your best and submit that. But until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.